Okay, so welcome back. So before the um, break, uh, I uh, had posed this problem that the arc tan function is usually uh, considered to have codomain between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. For the basis of uh, this video, what we want is we want to consider arc tan as being uh, this function here. So all the positive values are going to be taken onto values between 0 and pi over 2, and we want to move this bit up here, so we're going to have it like that, and it will va map the negative ones onto uh, the numbers between pi over 2 and uh, pi up there. So we want this function, and it's basically you just chop this bit off here and sort of bring it up, raise it by uh, pi. Okay, uh, so we're going to consider arctan of uh, 1 over t to be this, well, arc, this is arctan of x, clearly. Uh, we're going to consider arctan of x to be um, this for the basis of this video. Okay, uh, so um, if we... Uh, if we do that, and we must remember that, uh, basically we just, if you want, if it makes you more comfortable, just call this uh, f of 1 over t, so just call this function f rather than arctan, but it's obviously very, very much so related to arctan, and then we've got f of 1 over t rather than arctan of 1 over t, in fact that's probably a better idea, we'll just call it f. Okay, uh, so uh, now uh, our um, double integral, uh, we get that this theta uh, of t is going to be um, is going to be an um, f of 1 over t, basically. So, feature of t feature is equal to f of 1 over t, like that. And uh, then we need to put in, uh, for in place of uh, this uh, lower bound down here, so feature of t, we're going to put in uh, this f of 1 over t now, because feature of t is going to be 1 over t. So, we get the integral from f of 1 over t to pi, we need to times that by 2, of the integral from 0 to infinity of, what was it? It was r uh, over 2 pi, I think, e to the negative r squared over 2 uh, dr d theta. So let me just check that that is indeed correct. Okay, so that's looking good. Here we are. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so we'll pull out the 1 over 2 pi, and then we'll do, we'll proceed with the first integral. And this is uh, the probability that big T is less than or equal to little t, i.e. it's the cumulative distribution function of this random variable t evaluated at some little t. Okay, so we'll cancel the 2s, and we'll get 1 over pi, uh, the integral from f of 1 over t to uh, pi, of uh, this integral from 0 to infinity of uh, r e, so I'll just write it down, 0 to infinity, r e to the negative r squared over 2 dr d theta, which is an integral we've seen many times before, and it's very nice and easy to integrate because this here is the derivative of the inside thing here. So if we look at this, the derivative with respect to r of negative, consider this derivative, the derivative of negative e to the negative r squared over 2, if we consider that derivative, uh, then it is going to be negative negative e to the negative r squared over 2, if we differentiate the outer bit, which is the exponential function, and then by the chain rule we have to differentiate the inner bit, the derivative of negative r squared over 2 is just uh, times uh, r, because it would be times 2r, but the 2 cancels with the bottom one. Uh, so that's just going to give us r e to the negative r squared over 2. Okay, so that implies that the antiderivative of this is equal to this. So by the second fundamental theorem of calculus, we can write this integral out as the integral from f uh, uh, of 1 over t to uh, pi here, pi, of um, the antiderivative is negative e to the negative r squared over 2, and we want to evaluate that between 0 and infinity. So if we take the limit as uh, n approaches infinity, uh, then obviously this is going to approach 0, so we still need the d theta there. So this is equal to 1 over pi, the integral from f of 1 over t, uh, to uh, pi of uh, negative e, uh, the limit, let's say, as x approaches infinity, of negative e to the negative x squared over 2, which is going to be 0, minus, neg minus e to the negative 0 squared over 2. Okay, and then we're doing all of that d theta, integrating that d theta. Okay, so uh, this limit is equal to 0 because that's just a normal distribution, the negative of the normal distributions, it just looks something like this, and as you take the limit as x approaches 0, it's just approaching 0 up here, so that is equal to 0. This here, exponential of, a net of 0 is equal to 1, so we get plus 1 overall, so this overall becomes 1 over pi, the integral 
of f of 1 over t 2 pi uh, of 1 d theta, which uh, if we integrate 1 d theta, the antiderivative of 1 is just theta, so this becomes 1 over pi times uh, theta evaluated between f of 1 over t to uh, pi, basically. Okay, and uh, if we uh, do this, this becomes 1 over pi of uh, pi minus uh, f of uh, 1 over t, basically. Okay, so uh, multiply that out and we get 1 minus 1 over pi uh, f of 1 over t. Right, and you must remember what this f is. This f is a function we've defined, uh, which is uh, related beautifully to arc tan. Indeed, it's equal to this function here, like this. So it goes up, uh, so uh, if I define f on um, x a real number, then it's going to map it onto uh, arc tan of x. Uh, if, um, if what? If x is a... If, let's say, x is a, a positive, non-negative real number, uh, it's difficult to know what to do if x is equal to 0. Is that ever going to be a problem? No, it probably isn't, because t would have to be infinite if x was equal to uh, 0. So it's probably not a problem for our, our, our case here. And then, um, but that is a, that is a consideration. Um, arc tan of x, what? Wait, um, hmm... What would we have what? No, yes, that's this needs to be defined even more carefully. It needs to be that for the positive numbers. So remember what we're doing here. We have this. This is our plane. Remember, and this function is what we want to. We want it to take uh, a value x to uh, values like. Um, right. What's the other one? This one goes down here. So it's going to be like that. But I think it wants to take this. Uh, I think you need to take zero to uh, pi, I think it needs to go exact, or maybe pi over 2, sorry, pi over 2. The reason being that 1 over t, if 1 over t is equal to 0, um, or maybe not actually, um, let me just um, think about this. So, um, the 1 over t values, this function is supposed to be mapping 1 over t to the angle that corresponds to it, isn't it? Uh, so, it's supposed to be that mapping. You have a t value here, and it's supposed to be mapping that t value onto the angle it was. So, if t was equal to, uh, and these curve, these curves were y is equal to x over t. So, if t was equal to zero, you end up with a uh, curve with infinite gradient. I end up with the curve uh, with uh, angle pi over two. So, no. What would give you the uh, value where 1 over t was equal to 0 when t becomes infinite? And that would correspond to this. So, no, you do want it to equal 0 uh, when x is equal to uh, z when what, uh, x is equal to 0. So, that's fine. And then arc tan of x, uh, it needs to be, um, needs to be, uh, you need to add on uh, pi to that for x is an element of the negative number, so negative infinity to 0 like that. I think that's right. So if we have a negative t value, it wants to take it onto uh, the value of pi, uh, the value of theta corresponding to that, and uh, that's going to be all good there. So that's fine. Yes. Uh, right. So that's that's looking good here. Um, very good. Right. So that's fine. Uh, so that's how we would define this function on. Um, on the interval, on the real number. So it doesn't include that point there. The point at zero is down here, basically. Okay, right. And now that's the cumulative distribution function for the uh, Cauchy distribution. So if we want the probability density function, then all we need to do, so that f of big T of little t is equal to 1 minus 1 over pi f of 1 over t. Okay, so if we want the... Um, PDF, all we need to do is differentiate this. So if we differentiate this, we'll get the PDF of t, uh, of t as a function of little t. We'll differentiate this first thing and you get just nothing. So then you get minus 1 over pi, the derivative f prime of 1 over t. And then we need to times that by the derivative of the inside thing, which is 1 over t squared, negative 1 of that. Uh, because if you differ, basically I'm just applying the chain rule. I'm saying differentiate the outer thing, which is this f prime of one over t, and then differentiate the thing inside, which goes to minus one over t squared. So we get that this should equal one over pi uh, t squared f prime of one over t 
But what is f prime of 1 over t? Okay, yes, you have a few little problems at the actual point zero. Uh, but ignoring that prob that um, technicality, the derivative of this is exactly the same as the derivative of arctan of x, uh, because um, the gradient of the points, the function arctan of x, if I continue that on in a different color, the function arctan of x is this bit here, continued on down here, but the gradient, the derivative is the same everywhere. Okay, yes, we have this uh, little floor at zero, but never mind about that. Uh, the derivative um, of this function is going to be pretty much the same as arctan of x. So uh, this derivative, f prime of, let's say, x, is equal to the deriv derivative with respect to x of arctan of x. And the derivative of arctan of x, uh, if, in fact, let's do a little discussion of how you get the derivative of arctan of x, because this is quite fun. Um, okay, so if we want to differentiate arctan of x, one of the ways of doing it is to just use implicit differentiation, which isn't really a technique in differentiation. It's a sort of con, basically. It's a con from multivariable calculus that works uh, under some mild conditions. Uh, but it isn't really a brilliant technique to employ. Um, it works because of multivariable calculus works. Uh, so, uh, but we're going to apply it anyway. So if we consider y is equal to arc tan of x, then that implies that x is equal to tan of y. So now we can implicitly differentiate with respect to x, and we get, if we differentiate this side with respect to x, we get 1. And on this side, if we differentiate tan, we get sec squared of uh, y, and then we put dy by dx. So dy by dx is equal to uh, 1 over sec squared, if you like, of y, sec squared of y. But uh, we know there's a Pythagorean identity which says that 1 plus tan squared of y is equal to sec squared of y. And that's nice because we can now replace sec squared y with 1 plus tan squared of y. But tan squared of y is just x squared because x is equal to tan of y. So we get that sec squared is 1 plus x squared, so we get 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that's how you calculate the derivative of arc tan of x. So basically, uh, the derivative f prime of 1 over t is just equal to this, the derivative of arc tan evaluated at 1 over t, so you get 1 plus 1 over t squared. So now let's put all of that together and we get that the PDF of the Cauchy distribution as a function of little t is equal to 1 over pi, 1 over pi t squared times 1 over 1 plus 1 over t squared. Now multiply the t squared through and you get 1 over pi times 1 over t squared plus 1. Is it or more commonly written 1 over pi times 1 over 1 plus t squared. So that is um, the uh, PDF of the Cauchy distribution. And um, and if you want to draw a picture of it, it actually looks very much so like the normal distribution. Because if you want to graph this, if you want to graph this, then at t is equal to 0, you plug that in and you get that it's equal to 1 over pi. It's firstly an even function. It's symmetric around the y-axis because if I put in a negative value, it's exactly the same as the positive value. Um, and uh, if we calculate the derivative of this, you find that the derivative at zero, so let's do that. Let's calculate its derivative again to find out what its derivative is at zero. Um, so the derivative of this with respect to t uh, of 1 over pi what, let's write it as 1 plus t squared to the negative 1. That will help us with the derivative. So 1 over pi, then we get minus 1, 1 plus t squared to the negative 2 times uh, the derivative of the inside thing, which is 2t. Now, if you put t is equal to 0 into that, it's obvious that you're going to get 0 because this 2t is going to go to 0. So at 0, the derivative it has a stationary point. And also, if you take the limit as t gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this is going to go to 0 because you're dividing by something bigger and bigger. So basically, it is going to look something like the normal distribution, like that. Something that swells at 0 and then goes off as you go to infinity. Okay, uh, so that'll do for this video.